and he's yeah. Okay, thank you for the invitation, Kasha. Uh, yes, uh, it was a lovely meeting when uh, we first met uh, in Erichi. It was a great conference there. Uh, and yes, you could have been one of you could be have been an author of the uh, original Coda paper. I proposed it there. I had the idea during that conference. Uh, and uh, and talking to you more recently, I realized that I had to do this seminar uh, because yes, there are people who who read it and understood. It's not so difficult, but it's not a usual way to do uh, opinion models, and it's also not the usual way that physicists do things. So I have prepared here a more pedestrian approach to this. I'll try to go step by step. Uh, I hope I succeeded that because after so many years, so many of those things are so obvious to me that I will have to see how how I'll go. But uh, let's let's go. Uh, and uh, and I want to show how this can lead to a framework where you can basically uh, think about how the agents think about each other, and that could mean introducing biases and bounded rationality or or a more complete rationality, and how from that you get uh, update rules for your opinion model, okay? So let's start. Uh, first, the obvious thing everyone knows, we have different uh, models, discrete opinions. Uh, they can represent decisions very well. They do not speak about strength of opinion, then you have to introduce inflexibles uh, or things like that. You have continuous opinions where you have com com opinions over a range of uh, continuous values, like in the bounded confidence models. Uh, but those are not so very suited to talk about decisions when you have to decide something, although we have a strength of opinion there. So uh, when we, both things are important, what should we do? And this, and then I came with this, these ideas actually. Uh, while uh, watching the seminars in Erich, that I could try to do some uh, uh, to do it from a Bayesian approach. Uh, it was something that I was already interested, in, so it was natural to propose that. So uh, basically, if you look at the final model, and I will uh, and I will get there uh, later, but just telling you where we will end here. Uh, the CODA model is an additive model where uh, we have uh, internal opinion that is this knee, uh, knee I. It's uh, updated adding or subtracting one, depending on if, the, if your neighbor supports A or B, if your neighbor... Uh, it is, and uh, what, you, what people observe is this, the sign of knee. And they update that uh, their opinion using that sign. They add the sign of the opinion of their neighbors, basically. So implementing it, it's just that. <laughs> very very simple. Nothing. <laughs> if you if forget about the probabilities and everything, you could I could have proposed it like this, and there would be nothing else but uh, from that. But I did arrive at these rules from a Bayesian consideration that can be extended to make more general things. And that's, in, that's, uh, that's the, what I want to talk about today. So the model is just that. You update your opinion I, uh, an e, that is continuous. It can go from minus infinite to plus infinite, the uh, whole, whole range. And you update it by looking at your neighbor, picking the sign of it and adding to your own uh, this creates domains, this creates a, a very, very strong opinions because local reinforcement means that most people are always adding or always subtracting. So they, and that's the, that, that's the dynamics. The dynamics is just that. But how did I get there? And that's what I want to talk about today. So it was first obtained from probabilistic calculations. Let's assume there are two possible choices, just to introduce something, A and B. And each agent wants to, uh, to, would like to know which option is better. And it assigns a probability P that A is the best option. 
Of course, one minus P for that agent will be the probability that P is the best option if we have only two, okay? Uh, and then uh, it observable actions are, uh, it, it chooses the best option and that's what we observe. So uh, the spin will be plus one uh, and plus one corresponds to A, minus one, one corresponds to B. So if the probability is larger than 0. 0.5 plus one, if the probability is smaller, minus one. So far, easy. So, but we need an update rule. How will you get a PI in T plus one from the probability that we stand before when we have an influence by a neighbor J? Okay. So what I did in CODA, and here's the tar start of the Bayesian thing, is that the simplest possibility is that uh, if I think, if, the, if that the agent considered this very simple model, if A is better, there is a larger than 50% chance that my neighbors will pick it because it is the best choice, okay? It could be smaller, it's just, a, and then I will discuss if this is really need to be larger than 50%, but let's just start with a very simpler uh, condition that uh, I think my neighbors are more, more likely to, uh, to be right than wrong. So larger than 50%. Uh, I need the same thing for B. If B is correct, uh, what's the chance that they will prefer B? Those two probabilities can be the same. I can use the same values, but in principle, I could have them different. And it's very interesting because I was thinking about uh, then uh, as I was writing that, that, and there are a few things that I would still, uh, that I already want to do a few new things just from that considerations there. But uh, as long as we have that alpha and beta are not the same, we can have the rule that instead of alpha larger than 50%, alpha should just be larger than one minus beta. Why is that? Because I, I expect that if A is better, there should be more chance that they will pick uh, the option of A than if B is the best one. <laughs> If B is the best one, there should be a smaller chance to pick that. So uh, this last rule is actually more robust than the one that's larger than 0.5. But usually if we have them equal, uh, then from this you have that they're both larger than 0.5. Okay, just that. These are just this condition of probability. I'm, and this is a mental model. It's what the agents consider that the odd, how the others make their mind. That there is a, a chance that they will pick the best part, best option, just that. Okay. So now we just have to do Bayesian updating. How do we do that? Well, Bayesian updating requires just two things. Your initial opinion and that we have is P, pi is P, P of PI. And it needs this probable, this inverse probability of what you want. So if I want to know the probability, uh, in, uh, the, prob the new probability of the agent, the posterior, given that it observed my na its neighbor preferred A. So given that PID in T plus one, given that uh, sigma J was plus one, will be given by the initial pi A times the inverse probability. The probability that would be pick plus one if A was better, okay? There is a normalization constant that I need to put there because things probabilities must always uh, add to one. Uh, in most of the cases, this, pro this N will disappear. So we'll not write it here. But I should have a similar term to this and a term considering that B might be also the a possible result here uh, in the end as the normalization factor. So writing this in terms of the, how we define this here better, that's alpha. So I just have its initial probability times alpha divided by a normalization factor, okay? The normalization factor is here, but uh, I will not need it. Similar, if I'm thinking about the probability that B is better, 
I'm just defining, I do not need this Q to, uh, just, to, just to make clear that I'm talking about the probability. And here should be A. There is a mistake here. It's Q, Q I of B equal one minus pi I of A, not B. It's written wrong. <laughs> I made a mistake here. But uh, then we can write that this probability, if I update it by itself, do not calculate one minus, it will be initial probability times the probability that I will get a plus one when B is the best one. But if B is the best one, it, I will get uh, minus one with beta. So one minus beta to get plus one, okay? Uh, so how do I, how, what do I do next? I have this probability for A, for this probability for B. Uh, one way to, to simplify that is to, instead of working with probabilities, working with this, what statisticians call odds that are uh, uh, the probability of A divided by the probability of B, okay? If I do that, oh, I will call here all oh, uh, the odds uh, of probability A, the odds related to B is just one minus the other. The normalization factors disappear. Remember I told you I would not, not need them. So in here I have pi alpha one minus pi. Uh, and notice that pi over one minus pi is the initial odds. So the odds will be the initial odds times this factor that's alpha one minus beta. Things get a little even simpler to implement if I go one step further from what uh, statisticians do. Instead of odds, I calculate the log odds. The logarithm of that, because the multiplication becomes a sum. <laughs> okay, and I have this factor that is a constant. If I assume alpha and beta are constant in my model, this uh, this is a constant. I could have it depending on agents. I could have a matrix of uh, each agent thinking uh, alpha and beta, different alpha and beta for each neighbor. In principle, yes. I never did that, but it's a thing that I could have done. But in principle, I have this constant. So it becomes the, the almost that additive mo mo model I introduced uh, a, a while back ago. How to do that? Well, I could divide this equation four by C and redefine the variable here, the D. Uh, okay, but just before that, uh, when P, pi is 0.5 that I change options, the i is zero. So the rule for uh, observation, which one prefers becomes the rule for psi. Uh, and here I will assume that alpha equal to beta so that I can have this here, a constant that will not change if I'm, uh, because here remember that I'm always assuming that the agent observed that the, his neighbor was favoring A. There is a similar and uh, identical account if, if what you observe is B. Uh, the term here will, be, will in the logarithm, the constant will be different, of course. It will be, I think, beta and one minus alpha, but well, anyway, this is format. But there will be a different constant. But if I introduce the same alpha equal to B, uh, then uh, it becomes plus and minus the same constant. And if I divide by C, I get to that initial model where I just add the sign of my neighbor uh, each time. And that's it. <laughs> okay. Just a very simple prob uh, probabilistic. <laughs> The, yeah. so okay. just okay. Can you go back for a while to this equation yes. two? Uh, no, equation two. Uh, yeah, equation two. yeah, because yeah, that you told us that's it. So, so just for a while, because yeah, so that like uh, there is one typo, like it should be one minus pi, uh, yeah, pi, a, mm -hmm. and then yes, and yeah, then yeah, in this yeah. equation below, you have q. I, I I I use the base theorem again here. Yes, I know, but but if you have like B, I'm just looking. Uh, yeah, that's Q Y. Oh, a, there is a typo here in the A's and B's. The Q Y yeah. 
is uh -huh. one minus pi uh -huh. uh, of a. Uh -huh. uh, PI, there is one minus pi. And the, so here uh, is, here is I, p, 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 p. It should I be did a little confusion with the notation with, with, in i's and b's, but uh, basically q that is one minus p, p, uh -huh. p uh, it's the probability of b. So the probability of b, how will it evolve using Bayes' theorem? Uh -huh. It will be the initial probability times the probability. And notice that I am assuming that we observed in the neighbor the choice plus one. This is fixed. In all those calculations, I am assuming that what uh, the agent observed is that my neighbor prefers plus one, okay? Mm -hmm. So it could be that it prefers plus one because A is better, and I use it in equation one. And it could be that it prefers plus one because B is better. Yeah, but I don't why, why it's one minus B, why it's not B? Uh, why one minus beta? Yeah. Uh, remember that beta, is a probability that it will choose minus one. Minus one. Ah, okay, 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 okay. It's okay, the okay, probability okay. that you will pick the best yeah, option. Yeah, 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 sure, sure. Often sure. beta are the probability that you will pick the best option. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Here, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. here, it, it is not picking the best option, it's picking the other one. Yeah, yeah, he's so choosing plus one. I didn't, yeah, yeah, sure. sure yes, sure. yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's everything is, yeah, I just didn't still remember the notation uh, correctly. Okay, yes, yeah, yes. that's true, that's true. Yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. So that's it, okay? <laughs> Perfect. So you do that, the, you divide it one by the other, you get rid of the uh, renormalization, then you calculate log August, you make it ad additive, and you get in the end that initial model that's just an additive model and nothing else. And if you want to translate back to probabilities, then you need alpha and beta. But, but as you see, if you are only worried about the dynamics of the choices, Alpha and beta here are irrelevant. <laughs> they disappear. <laughs> uh, so uh, you don't, actually, when you look at the dynamics, you don't need to look at probabilities at all. You can implement just that. But it does come from this re Bayesian reasoning that you can use to justify and, and see that this specific additive model corresponds to a some mental assumptions made by the agent. So the model also makes that connection. While it's a simple model, we could have proposed this in an ad hoc way and uh, it would help explain extremism and all that. But there is also this, this thing that it relates to mental models of the agents. And I think that's a, a important thing that I have been talking about. And uh, this uh, I would like people to understand better, okay? <laughs> I think, uh, oh. I think I understand, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the va value of alpha, and as a consequence of theory relevant, if alpha uh, is not the same as beta, there is no natural renormalization because the steps will not be equal. The step to one side will be different from the step to a, another side. And that makes sense because uh, let's assume that, uh, let's take a, let's say it's a loaded position that uh, if you are in favor of a certain politician that everybody hates. So even, uh, and that uh, re relates to what we are talking here in Brazil. E even if you are, uh, e or if you are talking about the furniture in your friend's house, that was the example that you're in your talk, uh, people would expect uh, that the probability that I will speak uh, uh, positively of it, uh, if I don't, if I like it, I will almost certainly speak positively of it. But if I don't like it, I will probably speak positively of it less likely, but I will also probably maybe even larger than 50%, okay? So, uh, but then if someone say that they don't like it, that has an impact, that step is much larger. And it is reflected here because it's a, it's a surprise and surprises matter more. So I did make a, a, a calculation for illustration here that if I adopt an alpha of 80% and a beta of 40, uh, because, so uh, people will say it's uh, A 
with 60% of chance, even when they prefer B. <laughs> so beta here means that. Uh, that means that when you see someone who prefers A, you will move 0.288. When you see someone who prefer B, uh, who says that they prefer B, that's unexpected. And they move almost two point, about around 2.4 times the step is larger. You could normalize it by using either of these two numbers in the addition to make it one, but the other one will not be one. Okay, it could be anything from uh, so. Uh, and here it is an example where you start tying to what we were talking after your talk. See, <laughs> I think that should make uh, what I was thinking about a little bit clearer. Okay, so okay. it's like introducing a social norms uh, to the model that not necessarily are. Yeah, you have some bias, like 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 Serge is also, he is not talking usually about social norms, but maybe something different, but also this kind of bias, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, it could be social norms, it could mm -hmm. be biases, it mm -hmm. could be so, uh, it could be anything here, but uh, you can you can have this two probabilities that can be, I have always made that equal, but it, but it is interesting to look at what happens if they are different, because you have, uh, have not always made them come no, I have always made them equal. There are some differences. I made a few adjustments, but it was not in alpha and beta in other papers. But that's it. That's code, uh, and, and and we do all those things that were in the original code. Okay. Uh, what time do we have? Mm, yeah, it's forty past five, so we still have time. Okay. So uh, from that, from there, I I decided uh, I saw that. Well, I have this structure to create a model. I, I, I do not only have the model, I have a structure to make it. So I decided to make it into a theoretical framework. The paper is here. So I could, I could have things very simple. I have an opinion is a subjective probability on wherever I am debating. And I can use the base theorem to provide rules for changing that opinion. That was the idea. To do that for any case that I consider, first thing I need to consider is what is the issue, what I'm talking about. And I need to assign a variable to that issue uh, that I want to estimate. Is it continuous, it's discrete, there is a range, uh, it's a cultural problem, there are several dimensionals. I want to go to something like X or Rod to have many possible choices on very many dimensions, whatever I want to do. Uh, so each agent is making inferences about the value of that variable. It could be a vector, it could be a scalar, it's general, okay? So it needs a, prob a subjective prob uh, opinion about X and that's represented by uh, the probability distribution F of X. In our initial case, it was pi, pi of pi I, that was the chance that A was better, okay? Uh, this one can show indicates uh, the belief agent I has on how likely each possible value of X is. Just that. So here I defined what I'm talking about. Then I need to know how communication happens. I have this distribution. What other uh, agents do you observe? In general terms, it's a functional. It's a function of a function. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so in that case, it was very simple. It was sign of the variable. It can be trivial, but for the general case, if I have a very complicated F, it is a function of that very complicated. The, it could be a continuous function here. So I could have to take an average. It could be the expected value of the probability distribution. It, it could introduce some bias when people are talking. It's the average value, but uh, shifted towards something. Could be anything here. Uh, communication does not need to be intentional. Here is what other agents observe of the first agent. Of the third. So this uh, functional can be, uh, 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 I will talk about it's a, a j. It's what's observed, but it is a function of the internal probability. In principle, an agent could even express its full, full distribution 
uh, of probabilities to everyone else and people could deal with that. Could be even that, okay? <laughs> it's general, I'm talking about the general case. Now I need mental models. Uh, how likely will agents make that choice and express A given all possible values of X? Okay, so I need this likelihood that if X star is the best option, is the correct option or the socially accepted, whatever I'm looking for, what's the chance that my neighbor will express A? Okay, and now A is uh, like like it, also like X could be the whole vector or, or something, or what is A right now? What is this observation? A is what, uh, what, we, what is transmitted as communication, but it could whatever be what, that is. But yeah, it could be whatever. I mean, it could be also the like the whole vector of some values, or could be a vector, could be a mm -hmm. scholar, could be just the sign of the. Yeah. Okay. Preference. Okay. So it could be a scholar. It could be a number over a continuous range. It could be a vector. Okay. It could be. It could even be a multi-dimensional distribution probability distribution that agent will say, "Oh, I think that it's, this is a multi-dimensional Gaussian with this." means uh, this vector mean and this it could be anything okay and it does not yeah, relates yeah. to x so much so like x could be the whole vector for example and a still should could be a sign for example yes yeah exactly yeah. Mm -hmm. exactly x is the possible values of our of, of the variable mm -hmm. a are the possible means uh, the possible values that communication assumes mm -hmm. not necessarily the are, same dimension of they could be know? the same Mm -hmm. They could be the same, mm -hmm. but they could be very distinct things. Yeah. Okay. They, they could be completely different things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay? I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and this I is important. How, hopefully, everybody understands. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is important. So it's a, it's it's good to stop here because this is this is the crucial point here. Then it's just doing the math. But this has to be understood so that you're comfortable with uh, what comes next. Because the math is the, 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 doing the calculations is actually easy yeah. uh, for the simplest, for the published cases. So, like, Not, for example, like observation could be just as simple as a binary choice between two candidates for presidents. But then yes. I have my opinions on different issues, like, like uh, maybe abortion, death. Uh, uh possibility like punishment of death and uh also some financial issues and so on so on so i could have different uh like the whole vector of some attitudes but then i verbalize only my choice between two uh, candidates for example yeah it, it could be the opposite it could also be the opposite yeah Your, could be. okay it could be it could be also the inverse yeah. you could be that you have a uh, distribution of which candidate is better but you are discussing the issues. Mm -hmm. And what you're communicating is not your preference between candidates, but it's your preference on the political issues. Okay. So, okay. yes. Uh, uh, and then it could be a mixture of those, uh, of those things. You could have uh, in X a representation of who you will vote and what your political opinions are in each issue. And then A is what you actually talk about. <laughs> okay. So uh, for for different problems and, and for a real application, it can be can it can become messy, mm -hmm. of course, uh, for most simpler models. For the simpler simplest models we like to study, it, it gets incredibly easy, but it could get very very messy, and it it should be very clear what you put here and what you put there. X is what I'm interested in learning about. A is how is what I communicate to others. Okay. <laughs> so I, I have that like, sorry. Yeah, Pavel, Pavel Sopkovich would like to ask. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's, even, um, it's even slightly more complicated, but I fully agree with you. A is not only what you're sending or what J is sending. A is also filtered or biased, but by how you receive it or how I, the, the current age, receiving it. 
So in principle, what you're saying is that the A can be a very, very complex functional or a plot of, or, or a convolution of functional, but yes, it can be, as you say, totally different from the space of X. Yes. Exactly. Uh, yep. And yes, uh, it's what the agents receive, basically. So you're right. It's, a, it's where the communication enters. Because usually we don't talk about communication in our models. But sometimes it might be important to consider how the community, not only what we're thinking about, but how we communicate that. So you're completely correct, Pavel. Uh, and yes, yes you, could, you, you, you can introduce there, as you just said, that's perfectly correct, brilliant. Uh, the fact that agent, what agents will actually receive. So all the prob problems in transmission of information, you have to put there if they are relevant to your model. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yes, exactly. It's a just a general way to do very simple models or very complicated models. You put it there and see what happens. <laughs> but you have to be very careful defining it step by step to get those things uh, well defined and to make the proper choices for what's relevant in your application. Yes. Co uh, completely correct. <laughs> so, uh, and that is, uh, but then this P of A given X star is a likelihood distribution. I have the initial probability, I have the likelihood distribution, I can just go ahead and uh, of course, I, I uh, here, and then I can go ahead and update and apply base theorem here. So I will have that the the new inform uh, the new opinion in time in, at time t plus one is the initial probability times uh, the likelihood that I just defined it. And remember, there is a normalization constant that if I can get rid of it, great. There was a case where I could not get rid of that, so I had to calculate. Uh, I could not do go to log odds because things will not cancel, and I had to keep keep uh, keep uh, the probabilities. In most of our applications, I could just get rid of that. So it's important to note that it's not an equal; it's a pro proper proportional to. <laughs> okay, <laughs> uh, and that's it. Of course, uh, I need, just before I go, I need also the rule of who is interacting with whom. So it could be voter-like, just look at one guy. It could be a search do, uh, do, to make groups. And then and we did that in a paper and then they discuss and then inflexibles up, uh, having flexibles. It could be in cash away that uh, two is just when two agents agree and then send the, the sign, sign signal to everyone else and everyone else updates doing that. The, uh, uh, the interaction rule is open. It could be any of those. <laughs> See, uh, it's another step. I, 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 I thought I would have, I should have put it here, uh, but uh, well, anyway, the, the interaction rule is open and you put it there. And it add it to the, but this is the update rule. And that's it. And then you have a very general way of doing things. Okay. You put a mental model, uh, you put an uh, interaction rule, you get yourself a model. And, uh, uh, you put an agent, a, agent con mental considerations for the agent, you get an update rule. That's it. Example of other uh, agent models. One of the first things we did for was with uh, two friends in Brazil, Carlos and Renato, Sergi knows them well, uh, is to do that for a uh, diffusion of innovations. Because if there is a new product, if you observe your neighbors are not using it, it's natural because nobody had the time to buy it. It's just, you just see it on TV for the first time, you had no idea, nobody has it. So, Initially, uh, the probability that people will have it must start from zero. 
and then it can go, become the same that uh, the alpha can become equal to beta after a while. But what I did was to suppose there was a probability that the neighbor has tested. This will alter uh, alter the one of those alpha and betas, and uh, in this way. Okay, instead of alpha, and, but assuming alpha will be equal to beta in the end. Okay, uh, I, I will have the probability that uh, they will buy or not will grow up in time until it's alpha one minus alpha, one minus alpha and alpha when rho uh, becomes one. Okay, this will reverse to normal code. And then this was interesting because we could get uh, the tail of the distribution that's not normal in the literature. They tend to say the distribution are norm, but the tail in the long days are clearly not no normal. And we got to fit the, the model to empirical data. Renato did that. Uh, he got the data from, I think it was some technology or hospitals were adopting in, uh, not sure if it was in Denmark. No, it's been a long time. I don't remember, <laughs> but uh, he he managed to fit it very well to the state. Okay, I also did a version of bounded confidence with that, and now my agents are talking about uh, a continuous variable, and they are telling their. But in here, see, I will have a distribution of all, of probability of all every continuous value. And what others will observe is the expected value, the average. <laughs> so you have a, here we have a functional because op internal opinion is a one dimensional distrib uh, probability distribution and uh, communication is just the, the expected value, the average, okay? Uh, in order to get the same uh, the, in the style of bounded confidence, uh, I assumed that people might either uh, be around the true value, and that's the initial normal part, or they might have no idea and have a then pick a, a number in the possible interval with a uniform distribution, the u between zero and one. Of course, there are approximations here because the normal will fall outside also the interval of zero and one. It was to make calculations. Um, but then you get uh, the same kind of results you have in bounded confidence, uh, depending on the, how much you trust your neighbors or not. You qualitatively you get bounded confidence. Okay, so I can get basically bounded confidence using uh, doing this. More than that, if I consider if the agents start start thinking, how do I influence my neighbors? Maybe my neighbor prefers A because it was influenced by me, okay? So it might be because it's better, but it also might be because of my choice. So in this case, uh, the probabilities depends not only of what's better, but also on what I, the central agent prefers, what I say. Because then I am considering a, 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 a bit of more sophistication in my model when agents are considering, maybe I am influencing it. If you do that, uh, you have this for the probability that they will pick plus one, a similar pair for the betas, A, C, and D, and B, okay? And this leads to asymmetrical steps as I was talking before. It's not making just the uh, alpha different from beta, but you have here asymmetrical steps as I thought before. And what's very, very interesting is if you consider that your influence on your neighbor becomes larger and larger and larger, uh, the update rule in the end becomes basically this. If they agree, I will move just a bit if they agree with me. If they disagree, I move a lot. And this a lot can be so much that I will, uh, that every time that someone disagree with me, I change position. And when they agree, I basically don't move. This is Walter model. This is the basically discrete models. So I recover the discrete models and see I can use any interaction rule. So I just I recover all interaction all discrete models from this rule. So I, I got from my framework. I got bounded confidence, I got the discrete models, 
all as special cases in the framework. Here's an, this is an, and this is a thing that I, I really would love people to, to realize because I think it's quite fundamental here. And then I, uh, and then I started playing with that. I, I decided to introduce trust. So there are two types now, every, every agent consider there are two types of other agents. There some are trustworthy and some are untrustworthy, he and you. I try to write useless agents for you. I have a personal reason to do that because it was a nice acronym for a person that I knew, but let's forget that. <laughs> the referees don't know, use untrustworthy, useless is too strong. <laughs> uh, anyway, in this case, if I am a trustworthy agent, if my neighbor is trustworthy and I don't know if, he, if the neighbor is not, it will tell me something. It will probably give me the best option. If my neighbor is untrustworthy, it will probably give me the worst option, okay? And here I can also update not only my opinion on the matter, but how much I trust each of my neighbors. So I could have a matrix of trust, tau, ij, ij, that tells me how much each agent trusts all other agents. In this paper, I, I use them as fully connected. So the only, the only structure that would write, that would appear and would be network like was the matrix of trust. So everyone started uh, uh, interacting with everyone. But here is the problem that I told you that sometimes the normalization do not disappear. <laughs> Okay, so long equation, and also we are getting to the, the time is uh, almost okay. over. So, so the, let me finish this one yeah. <laughs> because it's, uh, here the normalization and the reason it does not disappear is I, yes, I can divide it one by the other, but I ha I have it, but the value initial value of tau will remain in the end. I, in the re initial value of pi will remain in the end. So I will have an equation that mixes me. And pi, and pi and p, n mixes d and p, and uh, then it makes no sense to go to d because I have to keep p every time, and since I have to calculate it every time, I just do that. Okay, so sometimes things do not uncouple and get more complicated. And since Kasha is also asking, uh, just to just not talk about that, but there are applications for heterogeneous agents. Uh, how they drive extremism, new models of how communication can be different, even in CODA, uh, and CODA with uh, many, many choices. There are things to consider how, how to implement it properly, and some colorful pictures to finish. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, Thank I you. think that I understand more than, than I understood till now, but it's great that we have it recorded. So, uh, are there any questions, or maybe you maybe I will start recording because then you will be maybe less shy. I will stop recording.